right? Yeah, so what's yeah. the mindset to really be a data scientist? I mean, you know, what is, uh, what should we be thinking about? I mean, there's no real manual. I mean, most people are born with it, math skills, economics, yeah, and yeah. these kinds of disciplines you mentioned. What should someone prepare themselves? How do they data approach hacking. it? How does uh, <laughs> someone say, hey, I want to hire a data scientist? How do I fill the rec yeah. form? Yeah, and yeah. These kinds of things. Well, I tend to, you know, I played a lot of sports growing up, and there's this phrase, you know, of, of being a gym rat, um, which is someone who's always in the gym, just practicing uh, whatever sport it is that they love. And I find that most uh, data scientists are sort of data rats. They're always, uh, they're always going out, grabbing a new data. You know, they hear like, oh, Yandex has uh, a new data set, and they've got a competition for it. So I immediately go and download that data set, you know, pull it into uh, Pandas and Python, and then just, you know, manipulate it, just check out what's going on, and you just. So you're, there's a genuine curiosity about seeing what's happening in data that, that you really can't teach. But uh, in terms of the skills that, you, that are required, I didn't really find any one uh, background to be perfect. Uh, so I actually put together a course at uh, the University of California, Berkeley, and taught it uh, this spring. Uh, called Introduction to Data Science, and uh, I'm teaching it again, uh, teaching it again this coming spring. And they're actually going to put it into the core curriculum uh, in the fall of next year for computer science. And so uh, what I really try to do is break down what are the things which I see people use frequently in practice which are not taught well in the undergraduate curriculum. So the five components of that introduction to data science course are, number one, uh, data collection and integration. Uh, so, you know, oftentimes in a machine learning or statistics class, you're handed a perfectly cleansed uh, data set. You're not actually asked to go out and, uh, and acquire that data set and integrate it with your existing data. Uh, and so I find that's a, that's a core skill that isn't taught well. Uh, the second uh, component is uh, visualization design, particularly dashboard design. So once you've kind of collected and integrated a data set, the first thing you want to do is see what's going on in there. Uh, and so visualization is still um, remarkably not taught at a lot of universities, but even when it is taught, uh, it's often taught more uh, on just the chart design. So we're trying to go beyond chart design and also go into dashboard design. So guys like Stephen Few uh, make a lot of money by teaching people how to do this um, in seminars, and I think integrating it into the undergraduate curriculum uh, makes sense. The third uh, component of the course is on uh, large-scale experimentation. So most uh, large web properties have a sophisticated A-B testing infrastructure. And they're able to rapidly design uh, new features and then deploy them to be tested. Uh, and so they define certain objective functions that they want to see how... Um, how the, you know feature A performs against feature B and make a decision based on the data about what to deploy. So we talk about what that looks like in practice. Uh, the four like simulations and stuff, whatnot. Uh, you know, standard hypothesis testing, um, uh, which is taught, which is often not taught as much in the undergraduate statistics curriculum as sort of uh, distribution design. You know, things like t-tests are taught. Um, so putting a t-test in context, what does it look like to actually deploy that? Uh, the fourth component of the course is on causal inference and observational studies. So the majority of data, you know, I had a, a nonlinear dynamics professor who started off a course in college once by saying uh, dividing the world into linear and nonlinear dynamics is like dividing the world into bananas and not bananas. And that's kind of how I feel about experimentation versus observational studies. Uh, everything is an observational study. It's very rare that you get to control um, the assignment of treatments to subjects. Uh, you're often essentially handed those assignments uh, and forced to do as much causal inference as possible. And I've often found when people say, we found nuggets in this data, what they actually mean is they've performed some form of causal inference and they're able to say that if we do X, then Y will happen. Uh, so I try and t teach sort of emerging techniques. You know, guys like Judea Pearl in the late 80s and early 90s really made huge strides in how to do causal inference and ob observational studies. And those methods are just now finding their way into everyday social sciences. Um, so I try and uh, teach that to the, to the folks. And then the fifth and last component of the course is on data products. So it's about, you know, uh, oftentimes people know how to fit machine learned models, but once you have that model, how do you deploy that into production? And then how do, you, how do you set up a regular refresh cycle? And how do you evaluate the performance of that model once it's in production? So things like people you may know. This is the classic cross-disciplinary trend that's required now. I mean, you have, it used to be you're great at math, sit in this chair, perform these functions, great. Now you really need to have this cross-discipline. Especially in CS too, you know. Yeah, there's really a focus, I think, on um, staying, you know, hewing close to reality, staying close to the data. You know, when I first went down to Wall Street and worked as a quant, uh, not that far from here, 
uh, back in 2005, you know, my boss sat in a room with a whiteboard and a drawer full of papers, and that's how he did his job. Uh, whereas today, I think the people who are really driving innovation on Wall Street are doing their job by, you know, gathering data sets and interacting with them in an iterative fashion using tools like R. Uh, so I think that we really over-rotated on complex modeling and under-rotated on, you know, data munging and data analysis.